In this video, I created a marketplace system using Flutter, Firebase, and Stripe. If you are creating a merchant and client app like Uber, you need a way to allow the client to pay for a product and you need a way to send that money to the merchant. This is where Stripe comes in. Stripe is an online payment platform that makes it easy to send and receive payments between different accounts on the internet. Think of it like a robust payment API. We need the buyer and the seller, these are the users. We need the user to be able to set up a payment account for them to receive payments. We also need a way to charge the buyer's card for the purchase they make. Lastly, the seller has to get paid. We're using Firebase for this project. This is the user data structure I'm using. We have our users. For your project, you would have some authentication system set up, but that would be overkill for this video. Let us set up our seller's account. If seller goes on the app, they decide they want to set up a payment account to start selling products. In the merchant style application, we need to have specific ID that relates to specific users. This way users do not send money to the wrong Stripe account and payouts also go to the right Stripe account. Since everything has to be connected, it will look something like this. The user's Firebase ID knows about their Stripe account ID and their Stripe account ID knows about their Stripe account. We will use cloud functions to start the setup process. We will be setting up an Express Stripe account. This way Stripe takes care of the information collection for us. I would not bore you with every information about the node application since you can grab the entire code from my GitHub. Set up a cloud function, get some npm packages, set up your Firebase config values, import everything you need, set up your Stripe API endpoint, set up two endpoints, one for authorization and the other named token. For the authorization path, get all the query values and redirect the user with the parameters provided. For the token path, we check if this is the correct session and if it is, we finish the setup by updating the user's account in Firebase with a general account ID. Next, we redirect the user to a success page. In your Stripe account, link the cloud function token endpoint to the dev mode Stripe connect token path. On the front end side, we open a URL using the URL of our cloud function and supply the query parameters that our endpoint needs. The app would open up the URL and we can start setting up the payment account. As you can see, Stripe has made filling all this information easy. Just fill everything, and when it asks for a card, input the dummy Stripe credit card numbers. After a successful setup of the payment account, we need a way to automatically send the users back to the mobile app. Here comes dynamic links. If you don't know what dynamic links are, I made a video a while ago on how to set them up in Firebase. If you do not want to deal with automatically sending the user back to the mobile app, you can just redirect them to a success page. Let them know that the payment setup was successful and they should return back to the app. Because dynamic link is harder and cooler, I would use dynamic links in this video. Since this dynamic link would always be the same, we would create it manually in the Firebase console. This is the quick overview on the application I put together. First we have a screen that just lists all the users and it is linked to each of the users in Firebase. After you select a user, the next screen asks if you want to be a buyer or seller. If you're a seller, you would either see your account history sales, payouts, and name, but if you have not set up your account yet, you would see a page telling you to set up your account, and you will see a bunch of text fields to fill. The reason for this is straightforward. If the user does not have a Stripe account, there is no information to look at, and there is no place to pay the money to. I also created a screen where the seller can create a product, and it will be added to the list of products in Firebase and also on the app. If you enter as a customer, you see a UI that shows you different products you can buy. Here I created 4 products and the customer can click on any of these products and purchase them. This is a good time to segue into how I store the products in the database. Every product is in the product collection and each product is connected to a specific user ID along with every information needed for this product. Currency for payment amount and calculations, product description, ID of the actual product so that we can easily access it. The URL of the product's picture, the price of the product, the product name, a boolean if the product is out of order, and the seller ID so that we can navigate to the seller's profile or use this info for any receipt system. We go back into the app and now we understand how the items are being retrieved. This is one of the main parts of this application. The user simply must be able to pay to the right Stripe account to confirm their product payment. These are the chains that we need. The Stripe account of the seller the amount and the currency of the product. To process the payment, we need to do some setup. 
we would use the Stripe Payment Flutter package to process payments and send payment intents. We start with the front end. Add the Stripe Payment package to the bobspec.yaml. Create a button that we can click on and it runs all this payment code. Set up some variables for total cost, tips, tax and others. Set up your private key with the Stripe Payment package. We do some extra magic and at the meat of everything, we send a post request to our cloud function. The request will take the payment method object as a body and will look something like this. Add the user's Stripe account ID and the product reference as query values. This is the endpoint we send the information to. We create a new JavaScript async function and this function takes all the query data and puts them in the right place. It then creates a Stripe payment intent and sends it back to the front end. The front end takes this payment intent, checks if it succeeded and confirms this payment. Every worker needs to get paid and this is where we use the Stripe payout system. When a user purchases from a seller, the money does not go to the seller's bank account immediately. It goes to your Stripe account. But I want one button click that instantly pays out sellers. Stripe has something called instant payout. This feature allows the sellers to immediately pull out the money from their Stripe account and put it in their bank account. They don't have to wait for a payout cycle before they get paid. Sadly, I won't be able to show you this feature because of one reason. The company I set up is a Canadian company. According to Stripe and their customer service, the instant payout feature only works for US companies. One thing though, I can show you the code that does this and explain how it works. The code simply takes the user's Stripe account ID, takes the instant available balance and then sends that to the user's bank account. Currently, every payout is set to a 7-day interval payout and you can see that on your Stripe dashboard. This is an example of a user getting paid what they earned earlier. Interestingly, this is the reason it took me so long to make this video. I didn't want to make a video without showcasing the instant payout in action, but I guess we just have to deal with that. Finally, it's time for the showcase. Before this, I would like to plug an app that I've been working on for a long time and the name is Awara. The entire idea is to have a community for artists around the world that focuses on having a concentration of hard talents showcasing their works. Artists can share their artworks, threads, questions, advertise their art shows and even more on the app. Download Awara and let your art lover friends know about this app at www.awaraapp.com and also follow us on different social media platforms. This means a lot to me. Ok ok ok, let's get back to the Stripe application. So when you launch the app, you pick the person you are. Pick between a seller and a buyer. Let's pick a buyer. I will choose to buy again this word. The product will be added to my cart. Check out my cart and pay using the fake Stripe card. If we check the Stripe account, we can see that the user was paid, the tax was removed and the tip would be added if any. Now if I go back to the beginning of the app and switch to be a seller, I pick the Kibati seller account. Now I can see that someone purchased some product from me. I see it in my dashboard and when we check the Firebase backend, we can see what the purchase looks like. When we check the Stripe account, we see that the seller with this particular account sold the product and the price is there. We also know that the payout will occur in the amount of days set up for user payouts. Or if you have a United States company set up, you can have the user access instant payout. I know you might have issues making this app work, so I have created a well detailed readme file and also I am currently working on the video on how to connect everything and how everything works in more plain English. I will be improving this app as time goes on, so stay in touch with the repository. This is the end of the video everyone. If you would like to see more videos like this, do not forget to leave a comment below, like the video, share and please subscribe to the channel. Stay safe everyone.